starting a whole new way of life when we arrived at our new basic training company. After the few days we spent at the reception battalion, we thought we knew all there was to know about the Army. But we quickly realized how wrong we were. The drill sergeants really kept us in line while we collected our bags, and we knew for sure who was in charge. The next eight weeks of training was going to be tough, but with the help of our buddies, we knew we'd make it through to graduation. The area was going to be our whole world for the next two months. basics of marching, saluting, and movement with the M16 rifle. This was the first part of our army training and we had many hours of practice. We could do right face and left face without even thinking. Learning the rifle movements was more difficult than marching. We practiced column right, column left, and counter columns. We thought we would never make a mistake again. Each platoon was sure they would be the winner of the drill competition.
experiences of our training was Victory Tower. 25 feet above the ground, we had to negotiate up a three-rope bridge, slide down a one-rope bridge, and climb up again on a two-rope bridge. Once we got the feel of the ropes, it wasn't too bad, and the safety nets took away a lot of the fear. Our drill sergeant showed us how to tie a Swiss seat, and it was a challenge for all of us to rappel down a 40-foot wall. The tower taught us confidence, aggressiveness, and teamwork. The phrase, be all you can be, went through our minds many times. It took all our concentration and strength to complete this event. as if it were a bayonet on a rifle. It was a good thing the drill sergeants were around to referee the matches because we actually had to hit our opponents. We had a chance to let go of our frustrations during this part of training, but we didn't hold any grudges against our partners.
training, we learned offensive and defensive maneuvers with the bayonet. We had to think of the tire dummies as our enemy as we practiced our moves. Thrust, butt stroke, slash, stab and withdraw was a sequence of moves we needed to remember when working with the bayonet. We 
learned how to react properly to the dangers of nuclear, biological, and chemical attacks in NBC training. Putting on the M17A1 protective mask, entering the chamber, and feeling the effects of the CS gas made us aware of what a real attack could be like and how we would have to prepare for it. We only spent two minutes in the chamber, but it seemed much longer once the protective seals on the masks were broken. Before we could exit the chamber, the mask had to be cleared and resealed. Even the drill sergeants suffered from the effects of the gas when the chamber doors opened. If we kept our hands up, we recovered more rapidly from the effects of the gas. This was one event we did not want to repeat, and the smell of the CS gas is one we'll never forget. Everyone wanted to be a Hawkeye and hit all 40 targets during basic rifle marksmanship, but shooting the M16 rifle in full combat gear was t We shot 40 rounds from distances of 50 to 300 meters, 20 were shot from a foxhole, and 20 from a prone position. To be classified as an expert, we had to hit between 36 to 40 targets. A sharpshooter hits between 30 and 35 targets, and if 23 to 29 targets were hit, we were a marksman. Breathe. Relax. Aim. Center mass. And squeeze the trigger. Those are the terms to remember to be successful. Once the qualification badges were given out, we knew that graduation was getting closer and that each part of the training was important. We now know the value of good marksmanship.
infiltration course was spectacular. The mission was to maneuver the 200 meter obstacle course with live ammunition going off within five feet of us. Training at night was a new experience and the overhead machine gun fire made us feel like we were in a combat situation. Duty, honor, country. A code of conduct and chivalry of those who guard this beloved land. An ideal so noble that it arouses a sense of pride, and yet humility. An expression of the ethics of the American man at arms. Duty, honor, country. Those three words build courage when courage seems to fail. We gain faith when there seems to be little cause for faith. Create hope when hope seems forlorn. The American man at arms, above all other people, prays for peace. For he must suffer and bear the deepest wounds and scars of war. Duty. Honor. Country. The unbelievers will say they are but words, a slogan or a flamboyant phrase. Every demagogue, every cynic, and every hypocrite will try to downgrade them to the extent of mockery and ridicule. The code with which those words perpetuate embraces the highest moral law and will stand the test of any ethics or philosophies ever published for the uplift of mankind. Around a thousand campfires, on a hundred battlefields, listening for the witching melody of faint bugles blowing revelry. Far off drums beating the long roll. This is the story of the American man at arms. His name and fame are the birthright of every American citizen. In his youth and strength, his love and loyalty. He gave all that mortality can give. Has never failed us. Were he to do so, a million ghosts in olive drab, in brown khaki, in blue and gray, 
would rise from their white crosses, thundering those magic words, duty, honor, country. Video Rama is part of the Morale Fair and Recreation Division of Fort Jackson. All revenues received from this project and other MWR activities go toward improving the quality of life for all the soldiers at Fort Jackson and toward providing a community of excellence.